Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek, and before we get started, first I gotta straighten a couple things out. I hope that helps. It's for you. So, uh, I have a coin conversation today about coin grading, and recently we had sent some coins in to get graded on two different tiers to find out if uh, the tier that you selected helped determine the grade that you got on the coin. The theory was that, well, if you pay more money for uh, a coin to get graded, you're more likely to get a higher grade. Uh, it was a small sampling, and you can watch the video by clicking on the link um, here in the video. But uh, I will say that uh, I got a lot of other responses. There's a lot of different ways that you can ask about grading tiers and how NGC and PCGS grade coins. And so I want to just talk about some of those other theories and they're things that we can work on over time and keep our eyeballs on and see if there's any truth to the fact that grading tier affects the grade of a coin. Now, for those of you who don't know, the grading tier is all that means is that when you send a coin to NGC or PCGS, you select uh, based on the value of the coins you're sending in if you want to. Uh, I just say if you want them back sooner or later, but that's not really true. So uh, coins under the value of $300, you can send in on a service that takes a little bit longer to get the coins back, but they charge a little bit less. And then you have your standard service, which uh, you can go up to $3,000 and you get the coins back faster. And then there is services beyond that. They have a spread express and they have a one day so they have really, really uh, expensive services as well. As though, as though 40 bucks a coin wasn't expensive enough, right? So, uh, so the questions that other people asked were, um, if you send a coin in with a value, um, a coin that exceeds the value of the $300, will they stop the coin from being graded above the value that you submitted? So there's two different ways to look at this. One, so if I take a coin that is every day automatically worth more than $300. So if I take a, an 1893S Morgan dollar and send it in on their economy service, they're probably going to contact me or just make a note and say, hey, you put this on the wrong service. You know, you, you cannot intentionally put more valuable coins on the lower service. They're going to catch you every time for that and just kind of point it out. Um, maybe if it's really marginal, they'll let it slide. But the real question here has to do with how they grade the coins versus the grading service level that you use. So the theory that people are asking about is if you have a coin that say in Mint State 64 is $200, but in Mint State 65 is $500, will they automatically cap it? Will they not give it a 65? because that would put it over the coin value. So a couple things have to be true for that to be true. One, the graders need to know the value of the coins, which I suppose many of them do. Uh, many of them are uh, in some way, they're not allowed to be dealers still, but in many ways they've, they've probably grown up in the hobby and they know general coin values. Now that doesn't mean that they'll know every coin that jumps from $200 to $500 and from one grade to the next. Um, so the hard part is if you wanted to test this theory, what you'd probably need to do is take a bunch of coins that you really felt were kind of in that special grade range and price range and send them in on the on one service, say the, the more economy service, and see what grades you get. Then you would need to crack all the coins out and send them in on the regular service, like the exact same order basically. And um, I, I don't know if and when I'll be willing and wanting to do all of that. But having said that, you know, look, it's for science, right? And it's for you guys. So, so maybe sometime I'll try to set some coins aside that I think may work for that type of a project. It is something that um, sounds a lot more difficult to do. You know, there's a couple other questions that people have about, do certain dealers get better grades than others? And does it have to do with how many coins you send in? So this goes into a couple of different things. So first of all, there's something called bulk submissions. And both NGC and PCGS have the service. Oftentimes it is catered. 
So if you ever see like silver eagles and, you know, on a, a mail order company or on a website company, and you're looking at the fact that they're selling brand new silver eagles for $39.99 and the coin probably cost them 20 bucks. How can they sell it at $39.99 in a holder? Well, NGC or PCGS will oftentimes have a service, a submission, a bulk submission that says, uh, you know, every coin that is graded MS69 will charge you $7. I'm making up these numbers, by the way. Or, you know, anyone that comes back as MS70 will charge you $17 for it. Now, I know this is how this works because I've done bulk submission in the past. It's been a long time. Uh, the numbers have probably changed. Um, and they might actually take, um, for someone who's going to send them 10,000 coins, they might shave a dollar or two off the overall price. But what's interesting about the bulk submissions is that they actually had a tier pricing based on how the coin grade, grade came back. So technically, there's an incentive for NGC to, coin, to grade the coins higher. Um, now, I, that's a technical incentive that doesn't necessarily mean that a grader looking at 100 Mercury dimes or 100 Roosevelt dimes is going to automatically lean towards a higher grade. Actually, when we did our bulk submissions, um, you know, I thought that the grading was was fair. I didn't think that they had overgraded stuff or undergraded stuff. I just thought it was, it was what you'd expect. You're going to agree with a lot of the grades. You're going to disagree with some of them. Um, there's a couple coins in there that you liked better than others, you know, that, that type of thing. So the bulk submission is something that's kind of an interesting thing, but what people are really getting at is, are there dealers that can get coins and holders, uh, that other dealers can't? In other words, can somebody send a coin in 10 times and it keeps coming back MS 65 and they want to get an MS 66 and then another dealer owns the coin and magically it gets into an MS 66 holder. I don't have any good actual information for you on this. Everything is anecdotal, right? Everyone's got an opinion about this. Um, I don't think that if you send a coin in to NGC or PCGS, uh, if, so for example, if I send a coin in and then if a famous dealer sends it in, I don't think that the graders are automatically going to look at a coin differently. Um, you know, when you send a coin in, the graders are not supposed to know who the coins belong to. I will say, and this is just humans being humans, okay? Not conspiratorial, but I will say, imagine that I am a grading company and you are a dealer and we're buddies and we've known each other a long time. Now, I own, I own a grading company and we sit down at dinner sometime, maybe I'm at your shop and we're just talking and you're like, hey, Ben, look at this coin. What do you think? And like, you and I can talk ourselves into a grade, right? So I know this because when I sit at the counter with somebody, the two people talking about a coin can really talk themselves into what a grade is. Um, you know, my only question for that still, even if you start to think, well, humans being humans, they're going to buddy buddy and, and someone's going to get a grade. You, you basically would have to say that the owner or the manager or the head guy at the grading company has to walk the coin through the service process and get it into a certain holder. Um, the only time I could see this actually happening is when you have like the super ultra rarities because the coin is a known coin, but at that point it's a public display. Like you can actually look at coins that have upgraded over the years um, from, you know, an AU to an UNC, uh, you know, cause it'll be a famous coin, one of a kind or just finest known. So that, that definitely happens, uh, but it's with public coins. So it's not like hush, hush, secret handshakes. People can see and, and judge for themselves what the coin is and what the coin grade is. So there is a lot to discuss on, on grading and behind the scenes grading. And, you know, there's lots of different theories about it. I still try to not judge people's hearts as much when it comes to, you know, a guy sitting at a desk grading coins all day. I don't think that he's automatically giving better grades to certain companies. And I will say that I'm still going to test some of your theories or try to when it comes to getting a better grade for a coin using a higher grading service or trying to get uh, a higher valued coin through the economy service. These are both things that we can play with here on the channel. It's lots of fun. I appreciate your, your words of encouragement. I appreciate your ideas. 
and we're going to keep talking about some of this stuff. And thanks so much for watching. You can leave your comments below and you can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.